Hello folks and welcome to this quick look at getting Spring Cloud Dataflow up and running on your machine using Docker and Docker Compose. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail about what Spring Cloud Dataflow is, but let's just bring up the website first. So if we go to the main site here, Okay, now if we have a look, there's a bit of information here with lots of useful links about Spring Cloud Dataflow. We're just gonna go ahead and go to the Spring Cloud Dataflow microsite. Okay, so I'll just say a couple of things about Spring Cloud Dataflow before we proceed. But as I said, it's not a full Dataflow tutorial or anything like that. So if you wanna find out more, you can go ahead and read on this site and go ahead and look on YouTube for other tutorials and courses, or maybe I'll add some more later. But at a very high level, Spring Cloud Dataflow allows you to deploy and run streaming applications as well as batch jobs, okay? So we won't go into any more detail than that for now. So let's go back to setting things up. So if we click on this local machine here, so there's different ways you can run Spring Cloud Dataflow. You can run it in Cloud Foundry, you can run it in Kubernetes, you can run it in Minikube locally. You can even deploy the jar files directly on your machine. You can just start them up. But we're going to go ahead and use Docker Compose because with that we get the messaging middleware for free as well out of the box. So we're going to click on Docker Compose and there's lots of useful information here. Information for whether you're running on Windows or Linux based operating systems, whether you want to use wget or curl. And it's got lots more information that's actually very, very useful for, for getting this up and running. Okay, so first things first, I've got the commands already copied here. We just go ahead and run this to fetch the actual Docker Compose file. So just something to bear in mind is the parts of the video that might take quite a long time, such as starting Docker Compose, I will probably speed those parts of the video up. So it might make it look like it was a lot quicker than it actually was, but either way, it doesn't take a very long time. So now we've downloaded the file, we can just have a look at that there. If I open that in Vi, we can just have a quick look at the file. Let's do syntax. Um, so now if we look here, you've got MySQL and you've got the Kafka broker. So Spring Cloud Dataflow uses a messaging middleware to actually allow the different components of a stream to communicate. So you could use something like uh, Kafka or Kinesis or RabbitMQ. You can probably support others as well. In this case, we're using Kafka because that's the default that the Spring Cloud Dataflow Docker Compose comes with. So if we just go on to the next page, you can see um, more Kafka bits and bobs here. You can see Zookeeper, which is part of Kafka. And then you can see the actual Dataflow server. That's the bit that we're most interested in. The port that's exposed is 9393. Okay, and now here you can see the Skipper server. Now the Skipper server is used to deploy streaming apps. So it, this manages everything to do with deployment into different environments. It's not used for bulk applications. So that's just something to bear in mind. Now, another thing that's quite important here is that this exposes a set of port ranges. Now, when applications are running inside Docker Compose, to get access to those applications. For example, if you want to ping one of the apps or look at one of the applications endpoints, you need to configure those applications ports to be inside this range. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that shortly. Okay, so I'm just going to quit out of this now. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and start the Dock and Compose. But before we do that, we need to set up some versions, which you can see here. So we'll just copy that. And then we'll just set this up. So we're just exporting these variables so that the Docker Compose file knows which versions to deal with. Now, if you notice, the Dataflow version doesn't match the Skipper version, but these correlate. So these, they don't need to be exactly the same, but they do need to work with a compatible version of Skipper so that the numbers don't match. So just bear that in mind. So 270 of Dataflow server works with 260 of Skipper. Okay, now let's go and check whether Spring Cloud Dataflow is up and running. So let's just go here and... Okay, bingo, we have Spring Cloud Dataflow. As you can see, as soon as we've come here, you already have a bunch of applications already there and waiting. Now, that's the default in this Docker Compose configuration, but you might see other configurations where you don't have these default applications, and you can just go to Add Application and select one of these options to pull in the various default applications which are already provided for you. You have other ways of adding applications as well, custom ones and all kinds of other stuff, but we're not going to go into that for now. Okay, but we already have them because we chose the Docker Compose file, which works with Kafka, and therefore, if we look at these, these are Kafka specific. So the way Spring Cloud Data flow works is that these streaming applications they use some underlying messaging middleware and the way they interact with the underlying messaging middleware is using a binder mechanism now these applications are built with the kafka binder so they all work seamlessly with kafka which we already have running in docker compose so now just one thing i want to show you before we go any further is if i grab this url here 
open that in a new tab and then just delete all of it including the dashboard part and I click enter you can see a bunch of useful URLs here which may be interesting to you or you want to keep a record of so that's just something to note if you get rid of the dashboard part you see a bunch of links just like a JSON with a bunch of links to various useful things that you can have a look through see if any of it's useful to you okay so I'll just get rid of that so now we're going to come back to, to our application. So you can see that we have different types of applications. Some are processes, some are syncs, and some are sources. The way it works is that things enter a streaming context through a source, and then that then generates messages to go through the streaming pipeline. Then they are processed by processes. They can fork off and do all kinds of other interesting stuff. And then you have a sync, which ultimately consumes the message. So the sync may write it to a file. It may communicate with some external system outside of the streaming context. Applications are split into these types. So now let's go ahead and create a simple stream. So if we grab a few applications, so let's first say create stream and we can create a stream in here app one and then pipe that to another app providing they actually exist but we can also use this graphical interface so if i just zoom this out a bit so we have the list of applications here first of all we've got sources then we've got processes and then we've got syncs so we're going to keep it simple just for the purposes of demonstration uh, we're going to grab the http one and drop that there now, if you've been used to using a slightly older version of Spring Cloud Dataflow, you'll notice that this dashboard looks quite different and it's running the dark theme here. It's quite a lot nicer and quite a bit more stable. OK, and then we're not going to put any processes in for now because we want to keep it simple and we'll grab a log there and then we'll join them together. So that means communicate with the output from here into the input from here. And you can see that it's constructed that there. Now, one thing we need to do is, as I mentioned earlier, there's a port range that's so these applications won't be externally accessible unless we specify the port on which they will be accessible, especially the HTTP one. That's the one we need to communicate with from outside of Docker. So there's a couple of ways we can do it. We can, I just grab my note. So we can specify property like this at deployment time. We could do like that or we can specify it in the next section. So I'm just going to delete that. So I'll show you a different way of specifying it. Okay, so that's our stream. And then if we say create stream, we'll give it a name, demo stream, and then we say create stream. Now that's created, but it's not deployed. That's why it has the status undeployed. You can get more information here and see the, the UI by doing that. And you can click into it and get more information there as well. In the meantime, we're going to say deploy. Now when we deploy, we come up with a bunch of properties. You have all kinds of properties here that you can specify, but the one that we're interested in are the application properties. So all this deployment stuff is quite interesting when you're deploying into different topologies. So you could deploy into Minikube, you could deploy into Kubernetes, you could deploy into Cloud Foundry, or other ways. OK, so then you get these kind of different properties which you, which become useful at that point. So for our application properties for HTTP, we want to specify the port. So let's just click on that and see there's a bunch of properties here. Most of them we don't care about, but we're going to specify 20,001. And the reason why we're specifying that is because that's within the port range that's exposed from the Docker Compose file to the skipper server, which is the one that allows us to communicate with these applications. So we're going to say update there and then we're going to say deploy stream. Now this can take a little while, so I might skip some of this forward. Now if we hit refresh, maybe we can see that it's deployed. OK, now that's deployed, so we can hopefully ping the application now. So if we come back to my notes here. OK, so what we're going to do first is using a little utility called HTTP. I've got a link there if you're interested. I'll add a link to the description if you want to go ahead and get that utility. But it's quite a nice utility that allows you to send a post or a get or a put request to a URL. But you can also just as easily use Postman or some other mechanism. OK, so if we copy that and go here and then we send a message. It doesn't like the space. Let's just do that. OK, so that's been sent. So the request that we invoked with this message, message equals hello world, that should have invoked the HTTP part of this stream, which would then pass it to log to be logged out. If you look here, you can't see that log message anywhere here because it's not logged here. But there's a much nicer way to see these logs. You can come over here, click into your stream, scroll down and on the right, slightly squished because of the size of my screen, you can see that we can view the logs from each of the app. Now, if we view the logs from the HTTP app for a start, you can't really see much other than the startup log. Now let's have a look at the log application. Let me click into that and we scroll all the way down we can see our message, message equals hello world. So just to prove that that's the case, let's send another message. Okay, now let's come back over here and pick up the logs and you can see that other message there. So just a quick recap, in this tutorial, we downloaded Spring Cloud Dataflow Docker Compose. We got it up and running. And the default messaging middleware used in the default Docker Compose is Kafka. That also came out of the box. We just started up Docker Compose. All of it was up and running. And then we deployed a stream consisting of two apps, one HTTP and one log, both of them bound to the underlying Kafka. For the HTTP app, we exposed a particular port because we're, we need to get inside of Docker Compose because we need to be able to communicate with an application running inside Docker Compose. And we pinged it and we saw the logs come out in the log file. So that pretty much concludes this demo. If you have any ideas about what you might like to see next or any questions just feel free to leave a comment below.